In this vlog, I'm aboard Ellie in Derby. Um, let's have a quick engine update. Hubnut, sponsored by Lancaster. So yeah, uh, I can't remember when I last did an update on Ellie's engine. Uh, you rem might recall she's gone up to a 652 uh, CC from 602 using a kit from Burton Car in the Netherlands, a 2CV specialist, but I might even be able to visit next year. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm just gonna move the camera a bit. Oh, that's upset the autofocus. There we go. And I fitted the 652 because I wanted a bit more torque and um, a little more power. And I think that has been achieved. And um, now we've done a couple of thousand miles, the engine has really bedded in quite nicely. There is a truck right in front of me at the moment. As we come crawling to a halt in Derby. Not the best place to go for a drive perhaps. But um, yeah, my initial um, concerns with the engine getting through oil um, it finally seems to have um, settled down on that score it was using quite a lot of oil um, I was having to top up probably half a litre every 200 miles and we drove getting on for 180 miles yesterday I think in total and um, the oil level was exactly where it should be so hopefully that means we're set fair for the trip to Croatia this summer uh, well, there's a fair bit to do. We're coming across to Coventry uh, for Coventry Motorfest. Um, should be appearing at various points on the Sunday. And um, yeah, there are a lot of miles for this little car to do. We've got to get back home from Derby first of all. Uh, we're going to go and see the mighty Datcher and see how that's getting on. Um, so yeah, very pleased. Um, the engine is usefully more powerful. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong I'm not burning off hot hatches but um, it's how more relaxing she is to drive because every gear change point is about 500 revs lower and uh, she goes up hills in top gear but she did not before so that's all the good um, so the kit was 330 pounds I think or was it 330 euros uh, I might need to check that one and uh, included carburetor jets. People have warned me that the carburetor jets were too big. Um, I'm looking forward to actually doing some engine investigations at some point to see um, whether she is running too rich. Uh, I really need to get an AFR, uh, air fuel ratio um, measurement device uh, fitted somehow. Uh, was hoping to do that fairly soon, but I don't think it's gonna happen before Croatia, to be honest. yeah it's really hard to get across just how much i love this little car the amount of driving i've done in it the amount of time i've spent sat here behind the wheel of this car um i mean how many miles have we done together now over 130,000 miles together which is quite extraordinary really um just as this traffic is i'm driving into derby in rush hour it seems well it's quarter past nine it shouldn't be rush hour -y now right I don't think this vlog is going to be full of enough words if I just prattle on about the engine. I mean, the, the point is, it's running very nicely, feeling nice and powerful, and um, yeah, oil consumption has dropped. Those are the headlines. Um, I think this vlog will now turn its attention to a certain Dacia. But first of all, I need to drive to it, and that's about two hours. So here we are with the Dacia, and uh, we're going to see if we can get it to run because it needs to go back on the road and um, a few things, jobs to do before it has an MOT. So um, let's see how we get on with it. So there's been a big change since I last saw this car, which is the change of the carburetor, I think, which now has a powered shut-off solenoid, hence the um, beautiful wiring, which comes from the positive on the coil. So if the coil's on, the valve is open on the carburetor and all should be well. Yeah. The extra wires pulled out of there were to try and sort this out okay. beforehand because that is an additional live which ends up at the coil via a um, switch circuit. Ah, oh, to try and bypass the ignition. And 
when I got that going the other week, it started up lovely. And right. We had, had a little drive around. Mm. But unfortunately, the um, the next, so I taxed it and went to use it, and, uh, and then it started. didn't want to work. And then it didn't want to work. Right. So, Hopefully it was just a lack of fuel. Yeah, uh, fil filter does look empty. So, um, so you had a primer feels. Oh, there's uh, some there. Well, I, ch um, I chucked a gallon in earlier. And right. And there's a fresh gallon in the Oh the yeah, now, now we're definitely filling the filter up. So hopefully. So we'll do a bit of that. We'll get the um, new battery on. And hopefully she will fire beautifully and majestically into life. It's got this little cable tie still to hold the um, primer still because it flaps around her voice. Well, this brings back some memories. Here we are trying to see if the Mighty Datcher will start. But I've given it a prime and um, we've got a nice big battery on it. We've got the wiring solutions. We have mysterious clicking noises. Hmm, indeed. Aha! I think we're going to need some jumpage. One handy, two CV. Instant! Beauty! How sweet is that running? So, that would suggest that we have finally managed to, um, I say we, Rich, has finally managed to get over the starting issues. So it does look like the ignition switch was our problem. That's idling beautifully. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello. It's now putting some oil out of the bits. I wonder if that's because the breather's blocked off. Uh -huh. Just to unblock that, do you think? Yeah. Too much crankcase pressure. Because all the breather pipes are all a bit different at the moment because it's a different carburetor, so that'll need sorting out. I wish it had started that well when the Bosnian police pulled us over. <laughs> ah, the memories. Oh, that was good. Yeah, usual problem with the gauges, but the second fuse down keeps losing its connection and you then lose all the gauges. All exciting stuff. Maybe replace that fuse box with a proper fuse box. <laughs> but yeah, this is the first time I've been in the Mighty Dasha for many months. Oh, well, here we go. Her first drive on the new carburetor, and um, seems to be going well enough. Yeah. Look, we're up to 80 already. <laughs> Kilometers. Which is technically slow. It's there or thereabouts. That's 50-ish, isn't it? Even the gear change doesn't seem too bad by Dacia standards. Yes, this brings back some memories. It seems so long ago that we covered 2,800 miles in this car across Europe. If you haven't seen the Mighty Dacia Adventure yet, I suggest you go and check it out. I still get comments from people who've just got to the end of the series and um, yeah, it seems to be enjoyable for them as much as us. Body rolling, body rolling. Oh yes, the fifth gear that's barely any different to fourth. <laughs> Need sorting out for the MOT. We've, there's the patch of welding that isn't up to UK MOT standards. Okay. Which I, I think it's perfectly securely attached. But it just needs a seam finish. Yeah. Um, there's, we could do some rear seat belts. 
They're probably a good idea. Yeah. The, um, I'm just moving the microphone around surreptitiously. You can barely notice. <laughs> uh, and I need to sort the lights out. The, um, the fog light and the headlights. Yeah. I've, uh, I, I, I can crack on with it now. It's working. It's yeah. The, pro the problem is I, I can never really get on with a job if a vehicle doesn't run. Yeah. The, I don't mind if it's got, you know, horrendous rot and can't, I can't put it on the road. As long as I can just drive it around a little bit, just to, um, you know, keep the battery charged up and things. Well, yeah, especially if you're trying to work on lights, you need that battery charged up, so, yeah. And the other problem's been where I've been parking, it's too far away from any electricity to do anything else. So if it wouldn't start, then, uh, of course, it's a bit of an issue. Got that drive shaft knock again. I wonder if that's the other drive shaft. Oh, we, we, we replaced one of them last year, um, but we only replaced one, didn't we? Yeah, the. Um, I don't remember which side way round it was. It was when we were going round the uh, left hand bend last time, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, well, maybe we need to put the old one on the other side because they are identical. The benefit of a longitudinal engine is the drive shaft. Or exactly the same each side. Uh, oh, but maybe a rusty nail isn't the best way of securing them. <laughs> one, one of the two, but we shall hope we get back without um, the dry shafts falling out. It's not as bad as it was. No, it was horrific, pretty much undrivable. So, but yeah, test drive is going well. Oh, this feels familiar. Right, let me check the fuel situation. Right, after yet another non-start, so that issue doesn't seem to have been banished. Uh, we've just pushed it over here so Rich can check the tyre pressures. Meanwhile, I shall try and consider what the heck is wrong with this silly engine. I mean, certainly that isn't awfully attached. Um, that probably needs a clip around it or something. But it should still start. All's well in there. Yep, cap looks good. Let's clean a bit of carbon off the springy bit on top. And now I will assume I'm putting the distributor back on the right way around. We've definitely got the fuel going on there. You can see that priming successfully. Which means... Does the... Um, the unless the completely off. Looks like it, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that, that needs attaching a bit more. But it shouldn't stop it starting. No. How curious. Yeah, so we've definitely got power there. Well, it's just gone a bit dim now. Okay, stop. Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, just stopped in the wrong place again. Yep. I've just noticed this earth point's low down here, so I'm going to try and tighten that up and see if that has any effect on anything whatsoever. That 
It's certainly tighter now. Give her a go, yeah. If that was it, if, if that earth was it, and that's been the problem the whole time, since we started our journey in Romania, just that earth point there on the back of this box. Oh, dear me. Oh well, it has been found now. And now we can actually go home. Good old Mighty Dacia. There we go. Maybe our starting at woes were all because of a tiny little earth lead that wasn't quite earthing. And um, I'm glad after um, so many months and so many miles, we might finally have cracked it. Load my camera so Rich can actually see where we're going. Whoa! Top Romanian power. Rubber. Right, now we can go back and have a look at what's causing that knocking noise that seems to have got worse. Gentle route up the hill. That sounds like a good idea. I, I approve of gentle. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the smell of fuel when you put fuel in the tank. Oh, yeah. There's something else to look at. Really is the heady smell of last summer. <laughs> We're back from the test drive successfully, but yeah, that knocking noise is really quite unpleasant. So we're going to have a nose underneath and see if we can work out what it is. It, feels a bit like exhaust to be honest and um, it seems to be a g-force thing so we'll um, get underneath and have a prod about a bit of the mountain plate off is the simplest one just slightly under from the front so if I can see it a bit better at least one advantage with the dash here is even when it's not jacked up you can pretty much pull one on it's quite good yeah remember doing that with that um, Gear linkage over in. Oh yeah, the joy of the gear linkage thing that didn't fit. Yeah. Yeah. It's me under one side, Claudio under the other. Yeah. yeah. That's got to be our baby, hasn't it? Yeah, because it, it looks like a flat plate, but it's sort of L-shaped that goes up on the other side. Right. Uh, there we go. There Still nice and solid under here, by the look of it. Yeah. This is nice. Uh, the exploding drive shaft actually isn't. Oh, I remember how awful that is. And um, we're now going to see whether the ignition, uh, well, whether the starting is now fixed. Sounds like it. Well, so it goes. Well, that's just about done here. It's a lovely sunny day. So I must say goodbye to the Mighty Dacia. Goodbye to the Rover, which features in a previous video for search for Rover 220, because this is a full two litre. And um, yeah, I should get Ellie and myself back to Wales. So I shall say, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget the Hubnut store. Um, go to hubnut.org. Don't forget we've got a Patreon page at patreon.com slash hubnut. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell. That's a very strange wave. Try waving with car keys. Planning. I never do it. One, two, three, four, five.